This is the Coin Show Podcast. The show about coins and coin collecting. And not just any show. This is the number one coin collecting podcast. Going 10 years strong. Here's Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman on the Coin Show Podcast. And this is episode 164 of the Coin Show Podcast. Hey, Matt. Oh, hi, buddy. What's happening? Got to unmute myself. <laughs> On this episode of the Coin Show Podcast, uh, Matt and I are going to talk about uh, the uh, the coolest things that walk into our shop this week, and we're going to talk about uh, whatever else comes to mind, and we're going to answer some listener questions if we have any. Yep. But first, as always, the news. The news is brought to you this week by deodorant. <laughs> Summer is coming. Have you got yours? Thank goodness for deodorant. Uh, I like that one. Yeah. Well, it's getting to be that time of year. <clears throat> Matt, the American Numismatic Association has suspended the 2020 World's Fair of Money. Wah, wah. Here, hold on a second. I think I've actually got that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I do. There we go. <laughs> so very, note the use of the word. Yeah, you have it too. I don't have it in. So load note, it in. Note the use of the word suspended, which does not mean canceled. You know, it's it's supposed to give us optimism and hope. Yeah. Does it give you optimism and hope, Matt? Not one bit. The the show's not going to happen. Yeah, I, well, uh, it, yes, I think that it, in a realistic sense that. The amount of planning that would go that would need to go into it, the uh, the floor space, the hook, the convention space, all of that stuff has to, you know, I mean, these things are planned years in advance. Yes, for sure. So, you know, I'm just sitting here reading um, the article. It says they were actually looking to maybe move it to Colorado Springs, um, but they did, did did not decide to go with that. So, and yeah, let's go with Oklahoma. Actually, the uh, the interesting thing is in this article it says that the uh, convention's only been canceled twice, uh, once in 1918 during the flu pandemic, and again in 19, oh, yeah. 1945 because of World War II. So interesting. Yeah, actually, the uh, the flu in 1918 affected the baseball season as well. Yeah, it does not surprise me a bit. Yes, the Chicago Cubs lost to the Boston Red Sox in the World Series that year. Huh. Um, NGC has decided to offer collectors and dealers a 20% discount on submissions to select tiers from July 27th through August 7th. So collector society members and NGC authorized dealers will still receive this 20% on top of their typical discounts. Oh, that's all right. I send a lot of stuff to those guys, so uh, I'll take any. Yeah, well, this is timed, you know, to coincide with what would have been the World's Fair of Money. They're like, you know what? Send these submissions to us. We'll do it. So submissions have to be received by mail, you know, the snail kind. Sure. And it has to be received in NGC Sarasota office between July 27th and August 7th to be eligible for the special discount. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's I understand. I understand that that's, uh, you know, they're trying to drum up that business that they would have got at the show. So, you know, good for them. Yes. I, I think that this is, this is an example of the resilience that you're seeing of, of American business right now that, uh, that, you know, they're, they're figuring out ways to get it done. It's, it's kind of like the seed that seeks the light. Right. You ever do that with the bean seed in, uh, in grade school? My wife does that with some of the, her plants. She always is commenting, uh, about how they always like to lean towards the window. So. Yeah. Well, well, what's funny, what we used to do was we would take the bean seed and we would put it on the side of a glass. And we did this by soaking a piece of, uh, of a uh, paper towel okay. and putting it around the outside of the glass. And then we put the seed, you know, in between the towel and the glass. So it stayed nice and wet and was able to sprout and it would sprout and it would start heading its way up. And we take the glass and turn it over and it would turn around and it would start going up the other way. And it was yeah. just kind of a neat experiment and how it sought the light. So it was just, that's pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. 
That's a really, really way, way far afield this time. Sorry. <laughs> I would just let you roll, buddy. I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, I, again, <laughs> it's babbling. I know. It's controlled oh, babbling. That's all the right. PNG Day Show, which was scheduled for August 3rd in Pittsburgh, has been canceled, not suspended. Yeah. Makes sense as well. Yeah. Well, I, they're just, I think, more realistic about it. The awards banquet, unfortunately, has not been rescheduled at this time. These are the times we live in, you know? I mean, we plan these conventions years in advance, and nobody can see any of this coming ex except for maybe Miss Cleo. No, she can't even see it coming. Yeah, well, maybe not. <laughs> you know, we'll find alternatives, but we have to be creative. I think that, you know, a lot of these organizations have been waiting for the virus to blow over, you know, and they figured it would be a business as usual shortly. But this pandemic may continue for months yeah. and then you know when the fall hits it may get turbocharged with some mutation yeah not yet it's it's just kind of chilling maintaining right now so well i that's now but i'm talking about in the fall yeah so oh. i mean that could be that could be really bad so i think that it behooves all businesses to start thinking in terms of contingency for a large and virulent second wave uh, right we are think about it this way you prepare for the worst you hope for the best and if you prepare, you'll be able to survive if, you know, we have to go into total lockdown again. Yeah, we're definitely doing that in our office. We were just talking, we had a meeting yeah. about that today, so. I think you could be better able to adapt and thrive, you know, if you start planning ahead, yeah. just. Yeah, for sure. And that is exactly what Las Vegas has been doing during the recent shutdown. So a socially distanced coin show has been conceived and will be a reality. The uh, Vegas pop-up coin show will be held July 2nd through 5th at the Palace Station. Huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so check this out. These are the guidelines the event is following, right? <clears throat> uh, let's see. The room will be comprised of 15 dealers and will likely be allowed no more than 25 additional people in the room at a time for a total of 50 people. That makes 40. Their, their math is off, but I don't know. To observe safety and state requirements, 15 24-foot vendor booths will be will occupy the same space that, space that normally holds 80 booths. And they'll be six feet apart in every direction. And the aisles will contain floor instructions, you know, like Walmart tells you which direction to go down the aisle. Sure. Um, they'll be let in and let out in groups to not exceed the recommended 50 people at a time. And... Uh, it says that the selling space has been expanded to three eight-foot tables and offers a huge trading venue. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I would just not I, go. If that was my look, option. Do you want that or no coin show? Uh, right now, I'd rather have no coin show, to be honest with you. Okay, well, I mean, there are people out there that are willing to be on both sides of the table for this. All right. Yeah. Not yours truly. <laughs> Right. But if they, you know, if they expect people to travel to come to the show, it's not going to happen. People aren't going to want to stand well, there and wait in line to go into a show with 15 dealers. It's just, it's not worth it. You know, this is the thing that, that I think is really kind of escaping a lot of people is that it, nobody's thinking about that, right? They're talking about starting up baseball again, right? Right. All of this stuff has to do with transporting people from one place to another exactly don't i mean and that's exactly how the pandemic spreads and, you know i mean so just be patient and deal uh, they with thought it. that they were safe in the south they thought that everything was cool that you know the warm weather knocked it out well guess what yeah you know, so i just hate the fact that our show is so consumed with covid uh, well, but I mean, it's dominating the news and it's dominating. Well, it's it's dominating life, dominating right? Dominating business right now. So yeah, it, it's kind of, we kind of have to be, unfortunately. Yeah, but yeah, if you want a choice of fifteen dealers and uh, thirty-five of your closest friends, thirty-four of your closest friends to to go and peruse some coins with, you and you want to brave be... the uh, elements of travel and hotels and probably all that be, stuff, probably be rushed along. I have to wait in line for four hours. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. they walk up. Do you have any bus dollars? No. Right. I mean, it, and they Next. won't allow more than one person at a table at a time. I mean, ah, right. I'm good. No, thanks. Hard pass. Well, no more than one person at a table. No, that that's not going to work because there's only 15 tables. Oh, that's true. But they're going <laughs> to 
they're going to require people to maintain six foot distance. But so but, well, you're going to have eight feet of tables, though. Okay, so even if one person's on one end and one person's on the other, that's like what? Right, that's what you apart? get. Yes, they're still going to be six feet apart, and that's what you get. That sounds terrible. I'm sorry again. This doesn't sound realistic. No, not at all. No. Hey, hey, Matt. Remember how there are already two commemorative coin programs for next year, so they can't make Morgan and Peace dollars as commemorative coins for 2021. Yeah, I heard about that. All right. Well, Randy Barr. Thank you, Randy Barr, a congressman from Kentucky, has proposed the 1921. Silver Dollar Coin Anniversary Act, which would create 2021 dated Morgan and Peace dollars to mark the anniversary, but they won't be commemorative. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Right. Right. Yeah. So it's a it's an anniversary act that would create dollars that were minted a hundred years ago, and they're marking the anniversary, but they're not commemorative. Uh, boy, that sounds yeah. fun. The coins would be legal tender silver coins struck from, and, you know, this is how the, all the legislation is now, at least, you know, 90% silver, meaning that it's probably going to be struck in 999 if this even gets passed. But it'd be more like a three-quarter silver eagle, which might be a cool thing. Yeah. To be honest, I mean, I, I think I might get into that. Yeah, I, I might could like that. Yeah, I, but you could only make the Morgans this year. You make the peace dollars as long as you want. Right. But Morgan dollars don't line up with anything other than, you know, unless you want to wait until 2078. Huh. Just anyway, the 200th anniversary of the Morgan dollar. Just reading this article right there. Stax Powers will auction a 1776 continental dollar this month. Cool. Love those things. Yeah, so a pewter example, graded XF45 by PCGS, should bring a couple of bucks. Just a couple dollars, yeah. Yeah. Research suggests that the coins were not struck in America in 1776. In fact, they weren't struck in 1776, and they weren't even struck in America. That's what I hear. Yeah, yeah the research actually suggests that they were struck in London in 1783. Yeah, and there's a really cool write-up in Bitcoin Week on it, you know, where you can learn more, um, you know, as far as who, why they were made and things like that. It's, it's interesting stuff. The $17.94 that recently set the all-time record for highest-priced U.S. coin sale will be auctioned again later this year. Go figure. You don't say. Yeah, yeah it sold for huge money. Let's sell it again. Um. Legend Numismatics is calling it the most valuable U.S. coin, but I don't think that's really accurate or even close. Uh... Matt? Yeah, I'm here. I was just thinking about that. Sorry. I was just... Well, I mean, think about this. The most valuable U.S. coin, right? Yeah. So I, what would that be? I mean, there are so many unique coins. There are coins that can't be owned. Yeah. There are, you know, I mean, to 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 Legend Numatics, Numismatics point, this coin realized the highest auction price, and therefore, in the technical aspect of it, you know, a coin's only worth something uh, when somebody pays something for it. I would say that this is the world's most expensive coin. I wouldn't necessarily say valuable. Well, most expensive is probably probably more more. Uh, I more I exact. can I can get with that, but I think expensive lends credibility to the price, whereas I think it's more of it is the coin that sold for the biggest price tag ever. It, I think that's that way thing? more accurate because that doesn't say whether it's a good purchase or not. Isn't that the same thing though? Most expensive sold for the highest price tag. Sounds like the same thing to me. Okay. You say tomato, I say tomorrow. <laughs> The finest 1838C Half Eagle has been sold for a record price. And this is a record price for any business strike Half Eagle. Guess who sold it? I know who sold this one. Yeah, our friend of the coin show, Doug Winter. Yep. Who owned the coin with John Albanese. Uh, the coin is graded MS63 Plus by PCGS and, of course, has a CAC sticker. Um, 
It had been last sold in April 1978 by Stacks for ten thousand dollars. Isn't that amazing? Well, I mean, this coin has it, right? Yeah. Whatever oh, yeah. it is, this coin has it. I mean, it's it's one year type. It's the finest known. It's from the first year of any branch mid. Yeah. And it's from Charlotte. Yeah. You know what I say? <laughs> I like that one. That's good. Yeah. That's the total. <laughs> now for the unrare. NGC has certified over 50% of all of the Eagles made earlier this year in Philadelphia. Wow. Well, that That's right. Me. Get ready to see these things on late night TV, infomercials, coin shopping networks for years to come. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there were 240,000 eagles struck in Philly. So that means there are over 125 or over 120,000 of these in slabs already. And just NGC slabs. Yes, that's true. So uh, there's probably, you know, not quite well, as did, many, obviously. Did, did, PCGS, uh, did PCGS sanction this nonsense? Oh, you know, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I don't. I can't remember seeing one yet. But that doesn't doesn't mean this or that. I don't know. Good question. I mean, I think that this kind of stuff does you know a disservice to our hobby. They're purely a buy the holder coin. Yes. For Unsuspecting sure. buyers think that you know the certification is going to mean something that the coins are rare because the guy on TV is going rare, 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 rare right? And there's this really, really high grade, and that's a fact. And that's going to turn a lot of people off to this hockey. I mean, that's just sad, but it's the way it's going to work. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't necessarily agree with it, but, you know, I'm also not. This one is going to become the company. bicentennial quarter of, of, uh, of Silver Eagles. Of Silver Eagles, yeah. That wouldn't surprise. Common as dirt. Yeah. Are you really sure that you like the idea of Bitcoin, Matt? Uh, no. I, don't, I mean, it's okay. Uh, I'm not completely sold See, on it. Well, I was, I was kind of on the fence, right? Not really knowing what to think about it. But until I read this this article, I saw it as kind of a, you know, just a middle finger to government as a concept, right? Right. And for to hide assets. But... Then this article showed me the biggest danger of Bitcoin. So the Asset Recovery Unit in New Zealand has announced the freezing of 140 million New Zealand dollars. It's about 90 million, excuse me, about 90 million U.S. as part of their global investigation into BTCE, a now defunct Bitcoin exchange. So the exchange is accused of laundering billions and billions of dollars for crime syndicates. Oh, that ain't good. That's bad news. And so if you didn't think about that facet of Bitcoin, please do so. Yeah. Because, you know, we all kind of thought of it as well, you know, I mean, we can kind of use it for this, which is not really all that dirty or underhanded. Or, you know. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know, there's too many things in that that can just, they, they just, they, they have the wrong well, when it, when it comes to anything like that, I'm sure it was started with good intentions, but uh, you know, bad people will always find a way to misuse anything you can. You yeah, can I mean, it was it was a way to create liberty, yeah. and liberty is a good thing. But unfortunately, the corrupt will always figure that out and always find a way to really make that work. Yeah, there it is. You know, so interesting. That's why we can't have nice things. That's right. Darn it. And finally, in the news. <clears throat> A hoard of rare Morgan dollars has been discovered in Atlanta. NGC has pedigreed the hoard as the Atlanta Bank Hoard, and it has a pretty cool story. Um, a woman contacted a local shop in Atlanta and told the story of her grandfather, who worked at the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank. Now, on Saturdays, he would take his young son to work and let him look through the bags of Morgan dollars for the most valuable coins, and apparently the kid had some jobs. Cool. So the Atlanta Bank Hoard has a lot of low minage dates. So it has 22 79 CC Morgans, 11 91 CC Morgans, Are these all 15 93 CC Morgans, 1894 CC Morgans, 20 95 O's, 37 95 S's. Hold on. 
94 cc. You said 94, but it's not. No, no, no. No, 94. So there's 18 94 planes. Okay, you said 94 cc, but okay. I'm keeping you on okay, everybody. There's 15 93 cc's. Yes. 18 94 Philly. Right? Yes. Um, There's there's 20 95 O's and 37 95 S's. So the 94 planes are the, the particularly rare one out of these. Uh, there were only 110,000 pieces struck. Right. So it's the second lowest minage of any circulation issue. Uh, a lot of these coins grade MS-63. Yeah, cool. But, uh, but some of the coins in, or well, most of the coins in the hoard are very good to eat to extremely fine, with a few of the coins being in mid-state. Yeah. Typically, key date Morgan dollars have uneven toning in circulated grades, but the Atlanta Bank Hoard is an exception. Most of the coins have similar and appealing toning. Nice. So that's, that's where they tie together, is the toning is kind of similar for all of them. But yeah, this kid... You know, this is before the GSA sales. Yeah. So it's like thinking about him pulling all these CCs out. Oh, yeah, here's a CC. Here's a CC. Yeah, and they weren't really much back then. They were just, you know, oh. common, pretty common coins, really. Well, I mean, I don't think they were common. I think they were rare. But access to it was almost, you know, non-existent. So these were sitting in the in the vault of the Atlanta Fed. And he got to just browse through the bags. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. So I thought that was a really cool story. And that's the news. Uh, and the news was brought to us this week by deodorant. Oh, that guy. Summer is coming. Have you got yours? Thank goodness for deodorant. <laughs> You're listening to the Coin Show Podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. Oh. Uh. Boy. Yeah. I like that. How's it going there, Matt Dinger? <laughs> good, Mike Nottleman. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have any listener questions? I don't know. I don't see any. You know what I want to do for next episode, and, and people need to get on this, is uh, your coolest thing. Let's do that again. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking that to myself. We're going to do another uh, installment of your coolest thing. We'll probably try to do that like every other episode. Uh, give you yeah. guys some time to get some new stuff in. And, uh, yeah, I think that would be... Uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be, a, you know, an episode dominant thing. Right, but, right. but definitely want to get you guys involved. Uh, you know, you guys that watch live uh, or yeah. just you guys that are in the Facebook groups. Uh, on the we want to get Patreon. you guys involved. No matter yeah. where you are, no matter where you listen, we just want to get you involved. Heck, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, you want to go check the email while I take a look at the chats here and see if we have any questions come up. Have no, don't have any music. I was gonna give us a little like uh, Jeopardy music, but I thought that I had, uh, I thought I had an email for a second. No, this guy wrote me twice. He, everybody sales, 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 sales. Yeah, they all want us to buy something. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, well, it's... looks like, and that <laughs> that was it for listener questions. No, I'm just yeah, that's it for listener questions. Brought to you this week by. Staples. When you can't find a thumbtack, staples. <laughs> you just got do you have like a do you have a, an album of these just laying around that you just love to just write them down in every once in a while? Actually I do have something that I've written them down in. Oh, it doesn't so I mean I have it. I have a record of some of the stuff that we've done, like for example, waffles. Waffles. We were sponsored by waffles. Uh exhaustion. Exhaustion. Well that's just all the time for me. Hand sanitizer, lots and lots of hand sanitizer. <laughs> yeah, I like that um, one too. Fly swatters. Yeah. Yeah, living your best life through, you know. Swatting flies. Yeah. Erasers. Life sucks and sometimes we make some mistakes. If you used a pencil, we could make it go away. We're erasers. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, that was, you know, because yeah. the pencil industry took a stab at them by saying pencils, keeping the eraser industry afloat for over 100 years oh. pencils well that's true those guys are they're ruthless yeah my favorite though was the ambivalent too oh i do got we a question care. here now while we were we were goofing around about our advertiser let's see what we got john rabbit asked us do you guys think remakes of the classics will help 
will help appreciate the original issue, i.e. 2021 Morgan, help appreciate the 1921. Uh, In my opinion, no more than the, uh, what was the commemorative, the old San Francisco mid-commemorative did. Uh, yeah, they did. They did a San Francisco mid commemorative that they had the reverse of the Morgan dollar, and then the five dollar gold piece had the reverse of the five libs. Uh, I don't think it really did anything. And if you ever wanted a cameo example of those, you could have them, and right. that was the only neat thing about it, in my opinion. Right, right, and uh, I mean, I think that the program guys will get on board with that. You know, they'll they'll buy a bunch of twenty ones and package them up with the the twenty one the twenty twenty one Morgan coins or peace dollar coins and. Uh, you see a little bump there, but I, I don't think it's gonna gonna be something that causes somebody to discover Morgan dollars. If you you know like coins and you don't know about Morgan dollars already, then you're you're out of it. So, or if you don't like Morgan dollars, you don't like Morgan dollars, and I don't think this is necessarily going to you know get you into them. Right. I got another question. Joe asks us, "Do you have any advice for collecting early proof sets?" I'm assuming he means 1950s and before. Should I go for original cap packaging, capital plastic, or maybe even a slab set? Well, uh, my advice on that is, is um, I don't believe that they started packaging sets until 1950. Uh, you know. Well, was not 1948? No, no, no. They didn't, it, it's no. mid-set. I'm thinking mid-set. So yeah. they didn't make a mid-set in 50. 50 was the first proof set. I'm trying to think how um, 42. No, the, <clears throat> I've had 40 sets in boxes. So no, they didn't it, package them. Um, the, the, it, yeah, it, I don't know how they packaged the forty-one sets, the forty sets, the you know those. Uh, original original packaging is hard because on those early sets they use that really junky cellophane that tends to fall apart over time and can actually have the staple in it, like the uh, yep. 50 sets. Yeah, yep, so. yep, yep. They do. They have the staple in them. They have uh, that really junky cellophane. I don't like the. And they have the alpha toning that goes with all both of those things. Right. Okay. So Joe's talking <laughs> about the boxes versus the cello packs. Okay. Uh, capital plastics. I like capital holders. Uh, you see, most of your sets in the '40s have been moved to capital holders for the reason that the original packaging is is prone to falling apart and damaging the coins, and. Uh, and then slabs, I, I just always like sets and slabs, uh, especially those early 40s proof sets where, uh, you know, a point in grade can make a difference price-wise. Um, so my advice would be, in complete honesty, I would buy slab coins because at the end of the day, somebody's going to have to sell them. Uh, therefore, I think that they're more saleable in slabs. Uh, plus, you get the, you know, the guarantee that the coin hasn't been messed with, uh, that the coin is original. Uh, you know, you get all those guarantees. So I, I personally would just buy slab coins uh, just simply because those original early packages are stronger. So that's just me. My, my personal opinion on it is this. that If I had to rank the three, yes, the original packaging can still be desirable, but it's still at the bottom of the heap. Yeah. Um, because a lot of those coins are going to be ugly or they're going to be just not, they're not going to be top quality. Because in the wrong in the wrong storage environment, that cellophane actually right. will burn. The and for a long period of time now, I mean, we're talking in excess of seventy years now. So yeah. I mean, it's been a long time. The uh, ones in the capital plastics holders are generally nice, but they could be messed with, and you wouldn't know it. Um, but if you know what you're looking at and you want to buy the coin, absolutely, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. You can assemble your own set that way, and you can you know buy the coins one at a time. Of course, the slabs are the best. And the reason that, in my opinion, that the slabs really rock the best is because of issues like the 36 satins. Yeah. Well, there's 36 satin proofs that you're going to have a really hard time telling those from circulation strikes. And then you're going to have the inevitable arguments with people about that's not a proof. That's a proof. That's not a proof. Well, when it's in the PCGS or an NGC holder and it says proof, nobody argues with you. Here's another question. Uh, CM Salerno asks us, do you think the $20 Andrew Jackson replacement is coming in the very near future? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, there's a lot going on politically right now that might motivate a change, but um, I think I hate to get real political on this show, but I yeah, think yeah. under this current administration that they're not going to change much. 
Well, he's kind of fond of Andy Jackson. I'm that's all. I'm not going any further than that right there. Under that, yeah, no, I'm just saying so. he he's a big fan of Andrew Jackson. There's a portrait of Andrew Jackson in the Oval Office, so I go. just know that that's that's I think undisputable fact. There you go. That said, um, in one of the pieces I recently wrote, I was talking about Andrew Jackson. I was talking about how ironic it is that you know Andrew Jackson was a person that hated paper money and he hated debt and he hated all this stuff, and yet he winds up on the biggest piece of of debt that you know you've ever seen to twenty dollar the US twenty dollar bill. Right. So, you know, I mean that's just kind of really ironic. Uh and then there are people that, you know, they're they're like, no, we don't want to take him off, Merca. You know, and uh <laughs> you know, so wait, I don't know about wait, you, all have, that, but you have to do I that think, again. I oh no 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 I have no, to hear no, that no, voice no. again. I'm sorry. I have yeah, to I know, you it. want a you want a clean version of it so you can drop it on me. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Too smart your for tactics me, are just way too transparent. You're too smart for me. No, no, your tactics are too transparent. I'm not smart. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys, for the questions. Uh, any Anything else real quick uh, while we're sitting here? I know, I see the yeah, we have swag. And you guys can pick out swag. You can buy swag. Matt is wearing swag right now. I am. My, my wife calls this you are. the you're thing. You're wearing a $1 shirt. My wife calls this the Thing One shirt. Jerk. Thing one. Well, it does kind of look like Thing One. I just picked the red one, okay? Jeez. Yeah, so we have those. We have, uh, I mean, you can actually design what you want in our swag catalog. Yeah, yeah, we have you several different designs, want. and you can pick what you like. Yeah, I am wearing a custom-made yeah, we're Coin, Show Podcast, Coin Show Podcast uh, uh, polo shirt. Oh, I like that. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, I mean. You guys can make your own. You do whatever you want with it. So you go buy swag at our website, right? Or is that the website? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's a, here's a. Aaron just posted uh, on the chat something that I saw earlier today that was very interesting. Um, Facebook has just banned the sale of antiquities, including ancient coins. How can they do on that? Their platform. Um, well, the reason that they say they're doing it is to stop looted looted items from being sold in an underground marketplace on Facebook, which some of the stuff they documented, 100% looted, shouldn't have been sold, but they're kind of throwing a blanket over a lot of different... Um, they're kind of throwing a blanket over a lot of different things that don't necessarily need to be included in that. Um, and banning just all sorts of stuff. And it's really throwing a lot of people for a loop. Uh, I read through their PDF that they put out. They had a couple of different, you know, things that they weighed. They weighed not doing anything. They weighed doing kind of a selective enforcement, and then they just weighed, weighed in on doing a complete outright ban, which is what they ended up going with uh, on their platform. So I've learned a lot of things, you know, working at Harlan Burke about ancient coins because, I mean, you can't work in that place and not be exposed to it in some sort. Right. And I was really amazed at what the rules are as far as what you're allowed to have and what you're not allowed to have, what you can take out of countries, what you can't take out of countries. And every know, country's and, different. Every country's different, too. That's the thing. Some countries... It is. Well, it's, I'll tell you what. You know, I mean, I was, I was, I think I was interviewing with Aaron for the job. Right, and he had a guy come in, and the guy wanted to sell him a gold coin, and you know, I mean, the guy's standing there, and he's and first question out Aaron is, well, you know, I mean, where where'd you get it? And uh, and it was just funny because he kind of stumbled over his answer. Aaron just looked at him, he goes, I can't buy the coin. Oh, he says, technically, I just can't buy the coin because I, you know, I I really don't believe what he said. So yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, it's. It's 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 hurting legit business. You know, people like Aaron that follow the rules, that play by the rules. People like Harlan yeah. Burke. People like me. I I try to play by the rules as much as I can with this stuff. Uh, I'm not a, a world renowned ancient coin dealer, uh, you know. But I try to ask questions about people that I'm buying stuff from. About you know where did you get this? Where did it come from? I want to know. And uh, if I feel uncomfortable about something, I'm not gonna buy it. Um, but there is a big antiquities black market. Um, you know, it was being facilitated somewhat through Facebook, but it's probably being done all over a bunch of different websites. But you know, Facebook took the stance that they were going to uh, just just throw this big big crazy blanket out there, and it was just done today. They just posted their PDF today 
uh, with their decision. And so they're throwing this big kind of this blanket ban on a lot of different stuff. Uh, but unfortunately, in the in the wording that they use, they use the term ancient coin. So, right. But okay. So here's my problem with it. Oh, <laughs> go and, for and it. I'm going to get. Pardon me. I said, go for it. Shoot, let's hear it. Oh, I mean, I'm going to get on the soapbox for a second because I, I'm really serious about this. Facebook, I have a problem with Facebook, and I've had a problem with Facebook for a long time, but my problem with Facebook is that <clears throat> I saw ads for fake Silver Eagles, yes, right? 100%. And they kept popping up from this place, this place, this place. That's all cool with them. Yeah. You know, as but long I as the money's the green, sale, right. it's cool. Right, right, exactly. But so I, to I don't like their selective morality, and that's pretty much all I'll, all I'll need to say. I don't think they know better. I, obviously, they don't know any better. So there's no such thing as selective morality. There is either you either have it or you don't. Right. Well, I, I mean, but in this case, it may just be stupidity. They have no idea that these people are selling fake. Uh, I don't think Zuckerberg's stupid. Oh, He's a lot of one. things. Stupid. Zucker, not Zuckerberg one of them. is not the one who is monitoring the the advertisement put in by some little company out of wherever they're from. He's not no, the he's setting that. the direction of the company and and saying this is of what course. we're going to do. This is how we're going to go about accomplishing bet, our vision. I bet if you were able to get a hold of somebody actually at Facebook and say, "Hey, this is a counterfeit. They're selling counterfeits," they would pull it. But the, I don't still think they know any better, and their system's too broke. For them to be advised that they are, you know, facilitating these sales of counterfeits. So, you know, I guess I just have a basic problem. And then Facebook. Justin just asked, "Do they do you feel like they may expand the ban to U.S. and World Coin?" Um, well, actually, technically, they they're, might. they're already kind of against their terms uh, of service. Really, uh, they they did a kind of a blanket wipe on that stuff all the time. Um. They did a they did kind of a blanket wipe with what they considered coin currency, you know, spendable cash, uh, when they when they stopped um cryptocurrency from being um bought and sold on their platform. So Yeah, but you could sell currency on Facebook right now. Well you can, but you're not really supposed to. But they also haven't been enforcing it, so Right. It's it's know. convoluted. Yeah, just... It's 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 a dumb game that we have to play to sell stuff on their site. Um, I don't know. I it, it's not the greatest platform for selling stuff, but a lot of people use it. Everybody has a Facebook, so it, it's just for the sake of ease. That's why I sell stuff on there, just because you know I can connect with anybody that I know most likely on Facebook. So. For our demographic, Facebook is a very good platform. Right. Right. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, and, and um, Aaron's, right. uh, Aaron's in our chat right now and feeding me information here to, to give you guys. So I, I like yeah, it. Thanks, I need Aaron. to get into our chat. Um, <laughs> he says, there's been a big push from archaeologists to end collecting, and this is where it came from. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then, yeah. so lots of negative articles against Facebook. Again, that makes sense, too. But. Uh, I mean, archaeologists, you know, with the, the civil war that happened in Syria, I know there was a lot of looting that went on in that country. Uh, these ISIS guys were just, just desecrating ancient sites and stealing everything they could, selling it to fund, you know, their war, which if, you know, if, if you, if somebody comes to me with something that says this was looted from Syria, I'm out. Nope. I'm good. I don't need it. Don't want it. But yeah, but the thing is, is that they're, they're probably gonna go to the not going to pay that. They're just going to go to the next guy. Right. And you have all the Right, right. So, it's um, it's just one of those things that sucks. Um, uh, and I find it very hard to believe that they're going to change their stance on this because they don't tend to change their stance on anything. So, yeah. So thanks, Aaron, for uh, yeah. For thanks to everybody for the questions. And, uh, thanks for reminding that. me about and that. Uh, Aaron will be joining us next episode. Next episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be talking some ancients with us. So maybe we'll maybe we'll get a little more uh, in depth into that conversation since he seems to know all about it, and I'm kind of a yeah. No, I think that, that might be a it might be a very timely conversation to have. And, with and I'm just the guy that read the article about it today, so <laughs> I think he could fill us in a little more. Yeah, well, I mean, it is his business. That's so. right. Like I told the guy on ABC, danger is my business. Yeah. All right, buddy, you ready for everybody's favorite? Everybody's favorite.
And now for the coolest thing to walk in this week. A competition segment between Matt and Mike to see who's had the coolest thing walk into their shops. Who'll win this episode? Let's find out. Matt? Mike? Who's got the coolest thing? There's a 0% chance that you're winning. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you actually have insight into this because you've seen both pieces. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, uh, it, it, it's it's going to be a toss-up. Mine's not all that cool. I like yours, actually, better, but I just have to talk well, a little cool. trash. Let's start with yours because okay. I went first last week. You did, so we'll start with mine. I bought a uh, just a generic date Carson City Morgan Silver Dollar 1882 CC that had some really pretty toning. Uh, the coin's reverse was rainbow toned where it sat up against the bag. Uh, the coin's like an MS62, MS63, uh, but the reverse is really, really pretty. And it's got a really pretty streak of blue that goes right across the middle of it. And uh, it's just nice. So this one came from the GSA set but was not deemed to be uncirculated. Yep, that's right. And so it's in the hard pack where it says, you know, Morgan Silver Dollar. And that tells us that, you know, the coin had the toning when it came out of the pack. So, mm -hmm. or when it yeah, came it out of the bag, to, I'm Because sorry. the other side would have toned along with it had it not been that way. Right, right. So, uh, you know, it had the toning when they pulled it out of the, the uh, original cloth bag that it came in. Uh, so they deemed it that it was... Not technically uncirculated according to their standards, but uh, it's uncirculated. Honestly, this would sell for a higher price than most uncirculated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the print yeah, it probably is strictly uncirculated too. What do you think it would grade? Oh, it's like a three. It's got a kind of a scuffy mark out yeah. in front of the face, but it's got a lot of luster. It's a pretty coin. Well, I mean, I will tell you what. I'm not a huge Morgan fan. I'm not a big toning freak. I really like the toning on this coin. Yeah, it's, it's not crazy, but would. it's pretty. It's pretty, and you know it's natural. 100% natural. Yeah, you could buy this one and, and study that's, it. That's, I think, the thing is, you know, they can recreate that in the laboratory, and you've seen it a million times. Right. So, you know, this one you know it's real, and that's kind of cool. And that's why I kind of like the toning on these coins, because you know they're hoard coins. You know they were stored in one place for a long time. You can actually study coins like this uh, to identify what natural, God-honest toning should look like. Yes. Yeah, no, Absolutely. And it shows you that, you know, you'll have, uh, in most coins, you'll have one side will be wildly toned and the other side will be blast white because yeah. there's only one side that was exposed to the cloth bag. So. That's right. And it looks like this one may have had another coin in between it, kind of on that one side, but uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. There's no cloth print on the coin. Sometimes you actually get a little transfer from the uh, the weave of the cloth. Yeah, little, little crosses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes you get that on the coins. It does exist. So... That's what I had this week. It, it just I was just playing with it this afternoon. I just shot these pictures today. Uh, and I was like, you know what? That coin's cool. So that's the coolest thing I'm on uh, from, from my shot this week. Now your turn, buddy. Here's, here's the thing about my coolest thing. It's not as cool as mine? I don't even know really much about it. So this is a token. Ooh. That uh, that guy's looking at me like I did something wrong. No. no. <laughs> so this is a token, um, and and I found it in a bag of Chicago tokens. Yeah. Now our shop is located at Thirty One North Clark, and uh, so I have this set of Chicago tokens, and a bunch of them all have Clark Street addresses. So there's 15 North Clark, there's 31 North Clark, there's, you know, I mean, all these different addresses, right. and it's kind of cool. Well, I pulled this thing out, and I looked at it, and it's like, and it says 85 Clark Street. Now, What's your address I was thinking, the shop okay, again? pardon me? What's the address of the shop again? 31 North Clark. Okay, so half, well, half a block away. Well, here's, here's the really interesting part about it. So if you look underneath where it says 85 Clark Street, you see in very, very tiny letters, it says the Green Duck Company, Chicago. Green and that's what told me it was Chicago. Sure, yeah. Right. But here's the thing is all the streets in Chicago are numbered north and south. 
not just 85. Huh, interesting. So this coin dates back to before they changed the address structure in Chicago, which was done by ordinance in 1909. Cool. He, he so like... this coin is the exact same size and weight. It weighs 6.4 grams, which is the exact same weight as a quarter dollar, huh. a silver quarter dollar. It has 25 on it. Okay. And it says to Colonel, now uh, one of one of my uh, one of my colleagues on Facebook offered that you know that Colonel Sanders and I'm like no. Uh, <laughs> I thought Colonel somebody, Sanders somebody in the chat just said a young Colonel Sanders. So yeah, no, Colonel Sanders was born in 1890 <laughs> in Indiana. Yep. Um, and uh, he actually started Kentucky Fried Chicken in the 1940s. I don't know. It sure looks like him. Maybe that well, was just I a mean, thing. it's it's a it's a. I think he's a caricature of a Kentucky Colonel, just like this is. And I think that that's what that was. Um, so I'm still researching this coin. I'm still really trying to figure out what it is. But here's what I think is the really the coolest thing about this coin. So in my research, I've come up against a whole ton of brick walls about this thing, right? And I have the luxury of having some relatively, you know, knowledgeable friends in this business. Yeah. And one of the guys that used to work at Harlan Burke is a guy by the name of Tom DeLore. Tom DeLore knows a thing or two about coins. Yeah. Tom DeLore says to me, that portrait looks vaguely familiar, but I really don't know what it is. Is it in Rolau's token book? So Tom DeLore looked at me and gave it a shrug and went, I don't know. You want to figure it That's out? That's what I think is the coolest thing about this. You ready to you ready to do the research with together with me? Because I've already figured it out, buddy. You have. I have. Okay, because I have I have what I think is the answer. Okay, well, we're going to jump back over here to the uh, to news. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit so everybody can see it. There's a really cool website out there called Token Catalog. If you haven't yeah, used it. That's where I got the answer. Yeah, uh, there you go. So we'll show everybody this. Uh, I literally just went to the homepage of Token Catalog and searched the kernel. And as you can see, it pulls up that it is from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and if you scroll down a little further, you can see that there were a couple locations, it looks like, from 85 Clark Street and also 125 North Clark Street. Hold on a second. I want to see where – I want to – God, I can't wait for the video to catch up because I can't see the site. Um I'm sorry, continue, because I want to see this. I want to see what you're looking at, because I couldn't find but a single one-line listing for it. Yep. So there, it looks like, oh, here we go. Uh, the Colonel 10 Money. The Colonel had a saloon at 125 North Clark Street. The player wins a beautiful yep. bronze medallion in trade. One side of the, uh, of the check is a likeness from a gentleman from Kentucky. And the other side has a dollar on it, so that would have been a dollar size. And then those can be exchanged for cigars or liquor. So it is a I'm good so for token. Uh, the URL of this website is tokencatalog.com. Uh, it's free. Sign up for an account. If you find all sorts of uh, fun tokens, you can search them here. But anyways, if we scroll down here to 25 cents, we see an example. This is not quite the same because the address is different, uh, but it does look like it was listed here at 85 Clark Street. They want a picture of it, so you might uh, you might get on this website and submit your pictures. But uh, here's one from 125 North Clark Street, and uh, has the Colonel 25 cents and a picture of our Kentucky Colonel. And then there's a little article down here below it that talks about his coin. Do me a favor. Send me a link. I will. I'll do it after the show. It's up on the screen right now, so I'm just showing everybody how to do it. But yeah, this is the homepage of this site right here. Uh, and then I just went right here. The the Colonel. Right there. Search USA. And she pulls them all up. So if you ever get tokens, you're trying to figure out what they are, where they're from. This Not mad because it's... Great. No, because I, I honestly, I've, I've seen this site. So what I, I here's what I'll tell you. Okay, so... Uh, if you look at uh, the one that I have, the one that I have is actually uh, TC one hundred seven zero thirty five, right?
right? Okay. These Moti pictorials were made by the Green Duck Company, a token maker located in Chicago. But that's it. That's all it really tells you. Yeah, 107035, Vecoletta, C-H-I-C-A-116. Correct. Yeah. So it says, uh, so I actually wrote to Richard Griever, who's the guy who runs this website. Well, they've got a and listing for And this is the reply I got from him. He says, this address was a saloon location in the 1800s and 1900s. What I did find is a description of the tokens issued by the Colonial Saloon at 125 North Clark. It describes these tokens, denomination on one side and the gentleman from Kentucky on the reverse. It describes a $1 denomination, which isn't cataloged. The Colonial Saloon must have either moved from 85 Clark to 125 North Clark, or the streets were renumbered and just the address changed. And that's the exact right answer. Uh, they did that in 1909. Yeah. Tokens from both of these addresses are similar. Um, and so then he asked me, would it be possible to get a picture of the token? You absolutely. There you go. That's because he's going to put it I'm helping out other collectors with that. So, yes. Yep. Yep. And uh, that website so does one, US... The one right here, which is uh, 210773, which is the 125 North Clark, is an almost identical coin. Right. That's how you know that they're from the same place. It just maybe right. that one's later. Um, it's kind of a game of deduction with that stuff, but as long as you have a little bit of information to go with, like this coin does, you know, you can figure them out. See, um, I'm searching 125 North Clark Street. I get, I get the other. You search the kernel, and boom, here it comes. Well, it's just a matter of oh. uh, finding those those hot words. Um, yeah. That website's cool just too because it does. Um, yeah, it does thank you. Uh, you're welcome. It covers all all U.S. tokens, and it does do world tokens as well. Uh, I don't use it a lot for world tokens, so I don't know how in depth it is. Um, but I have used it before and found it useful. And I use that website like three or four times a week uh, in the office, trying to figure stuff out. So uh, I have been dealing with an inordinate amount of uh, of tokens lately. Well, so there you war go. tokens, hard times tokens, merchant tokens. So yeah, you know, I I and I discovered this site. Uh, as a matter of fact, this was the only site that had any reference whatsoever to this coin. I couldn't find it in the Royal book. Yep. I couldn't find it any place. Yep. Yep. That's uh, and you have to make sure because they do enter them verbatim. So make sure that if there's a period there, you put a period there. Um, you know, they do enter them verbatim. So just make sure and that, that you do that in your search, and uh, that will uh, that'll get you square. That'll usually help you out. Yeah. Good job. No problem, buddy. Happy to help. Happy to show everybody one of my secrets. Uh, so, so cool. here's my question: Is what do we think this thing's worth? It's hard to say. Uh, you know, they they actually do keep records on some of this stuff. Uh, let's see if the other one, twenty five centers, ever sold. Uh, no, don't look like any of those have sold. You have to have an account uh, at Token Catalog to see the sold data, but yes. Yeah, it's, but uh, you can register for free. Yeah, it's easy. Uh, you know, it's a cool token with a cool pictorial. I'm guessing it's not stupid rare because there are quite a few others. Um, you know, maybe even, even though there are later ones, there are quite a few others it looks like in here. I'm guessing it's not worth a ton of money. Uh, you know, 20 to 50 bucks would be my best guess. Yeah. Um, but still, super cool. I was guessing right in the 2025 range. Yeah, I was, kind of my was Dennis Forg said the same thing. He was the other person that had, he actually remembered the hotel. <laughs> that the bar was in? Well, I mean, I'm not saying that he went there, because he might have. But um, he, he actually remembered the story about this hotel and the colonel and, and this kind of stuff. So Cool. Yeah, he was helpful. Well, uh, now you guys get to pick uh, between Mike and I for uh, whoever won this this particular uh, showdown. Pretty yeah, toning thing. or a story. Pretty toning or a story. Yep, that's your choice. There's your um, choice. So just uh, leave comments uh, on this stream, uh, or you know, over over time as you guys watch this, leave a comment which one you think is the best, and we'll uh, announce it like next show. Uh, I think Mike gave up last time. Last episode, I think you conceded. I did. So it wasn't even a contest. <laughs> so, so there's that. Matt pulls and, out uh, his coin. Mike goes. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I I think you're gonna get a lot of use out of that sound effect. Oh, I'm gonna have. get a ton of use out of it. <laughs> oh, all right, dude. Well, you got anything else for this show tonight before we wrap her up? 
Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah, no, I, I really don't have anything for you. Uh, I will say this, uh, join our, uh, not the coin show podcast, you know, as a, as a patron, uh, we do the show, you know, on the off weeks that we don't do this show and we have a lot of fun. We, uh, we debuted something that I'm working on yep. a project. It's not even, you know, I mean, really it's coin show related, but not really. And uh, yeah, I mean, so it's, it's just, it's way different. It is nothing like this show. It no. is definitely not the coin show. It looks similar, but other than that, it's pretty much nothing to do. With yeah. It's the same two ugly guys on there. That's, yeah. you know, what we need to do is we need to figure out how to switch the two of us back and forth. If we, if I could have figured that out, I would have never had that. I'm not the coin show. You do us the opposite way. If I could have figured that out, I would have never had to do this in the first place. So, well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. All right, buddy. So, yeah. let's see, hold on a second. Cause I got some. I've got something. Did they ever have that commercial, Eagle Man? No, I, I don't know what you're speaking about. Okay, so they had this really stupid commercial in the 70s here, and it was an eagle uh, for Eagle Insurance, and they had Eagle Man, right? Eagle Man. And he, he's eagle Man, he's this guy in this eagle costume, and he's like, I've got something for you. And he lays an egg. Now, it's like, that's a guy. <laughs> eagle Man laid an uh, egg. Yeah. And there's these there's these two girls and they're like, look at these low rates. All right, so um, we would like to thank our contributors, our patrons, <laughs> the people that wrote to us, offered suggestions and ideas, posted on social media, <laughs> asked questions, or in some other way supported or inspired us. We cannot thank you, our listeners, enough. Uh, thank you to Aaron Burke for checking in, give us a scoop tonight. Thanks to Tony Alvarez, Tony Alvarez Band for our theme music. Visit him at TonyAlvarezBand.com. Thanks to Justin for his contributions on our YouTube page and our Facebook page. And thank you to Ernesto for his contributions on both as well. Uh, go to YouTube.com or the YouTube app. Search Coin Show Podcast. Quick, click subscribe and hit the notifications bell. You'll get alerts whenever we post a new video, which this one will go up real soon. Very soon. Um, yeah. That's it. That's really all I, I had to say. You know, join our, join our Facebook groups. Um, but uh, but thank you and thank you for listening. Thanks, everybody. You've been listening to the Coin Show podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. The boys will be back soon with another informative and entertaining episode. Meanwhile, you can follow the show on social media at the Coin Show on Twitter and Instagram. And on Facebook at facebook.com slash the coin show. You can also join their private group. Just search Facebook groups for friends of the coin show and request access. But if you want to take it to the next level and support the coin show podcast, you can go to www.patreon.com slash the coin show. If you subscribe at the $5 a month level or higher, you'll have access to not the coin show podcast on the off weeks, as well as other surprises reserved for our patrons. Visit our website at coinshowradio.com or download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Radio, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. This has been the Coin Show Podcast.